Okay, so we're recording. Uh, let's see, my name's Brian McAfee. We're going to be doing a 20-30 eh, minute webinar on basically alert arrow-based trading. Any type of trading that you get something that says, hey, take the trade. That's what I'm going to try and cover some of the pros and cons of it. If this is your first webinar with me, uh, I guess some quick background. I'm old. I started trading back in 2008, horribly blew my accounts. Uh, up to about a five-figure amount. Um, that was in the Forex market. I eventually went and did a bunch of DVDs, courses, blah, studied online, read some books. And then in 2000, I think 10 or 11, I don't even know anymore, I started up with binary options, got decent at it. I've been full-time with binary options for about three years, and I got back into the Forex market. I'm about at 15, 16 months back in the Forex market. So I guess that's kind of my history. Um, let's start up with the webinar. So we're going to be talking about alert and arrow-based trading. Uh, we'll just start off real quick with pros. Some of the pros for this, and I guess you could refer to it as technical trading, uh, alert-based, arrow, whatever you want to call it. It's one of the easiest way for traders to jump into the market and start trading because basically the indicator is going to tell you when to take a trade. Um, some of the things you'll see, and I'm sure you've all seen it, is in some rooms where people using these type of systems that they get, I mean, unbelievable results. You'll see people do 10 out of 10, 8 out of 8, 9 out of 9, and it'll go several days, and all of a sudden they blow their account because they have a day where nothing works for them, that the system completely bombs and fails. <laughs> um... One of the pros, and which is also a con, is that if you're a new trader, it's going to tell you when to take the trade. So you get an alert, and it tells you when to take the trade. Entry does come into perspective there, where you just can't blindly trade these type of systems. So entry is something that you're going to need to work on. But those are just summing it up, some of the pros, some of the cons on it. And this is the big thing. The first one that I have up here, if you cannot identify market conditions, you're going to lose. If you're using one of the a signal-based system, you need to understand what the market conditions are when the system works. If you cannot understand market conditions, that's when you get into those days where you have nine losses and one win and you're smacking, like Lot said, you're smacking yourself in the face because you don't understand why you just lost. And I'm going to get to it in just a second, but you're going to see some of you probably have been trading for a while and you don't think there's people out there that are like that, but I get hit up probably two, three times a week by someone saying, I have a great system, it works, but now all of a sudden I can't make money anymore. Um, again, it tells you when to take a trade, which is a con, but also a pro, because some people don't understand price action, and it that's something I'm going to get into also in a little bit. Uh, the third thing I would say is it gives you a false sense of confidence, and what I see happen there is it affects people's money management. They get so confident in themselves because they're running a 10 or 12 streak, even a 5 streak, and they're used to, I get 5 trades and a loss, 5 trades and a loss, and they throw their money management out the window, and then all of a sudden they don't understand why they're not making money anymore or they're not doing good. So... Those are the pros and cons of it. We're going to get into a little more now. The first thing, if you're using an arrow, an alert, or a signal, is know what the hell's on your chart. If you don't know what the indicator is, if you don't know why it's popping an arrow, if you don't know why it's giving you an alert, then you, one, take it off the chart, or two, go learn what it is, then come back and use it. If you don't know what it is or why it's giving you an alert, then you don't know what market conditions to use it under. The biggest thing I see people doing is they get a system happy as hell, they think they got the holy grail, and what happens is they just blindly trade the damn thing, and they have, and I'm about to show you, they have no freaking clue what is on their chart, why it's giving them alerts, and when to use it. So you're, it's basically you're just trading blind. You might as well just have nothing on your chart and guess, because you're going to end up losing money this way. Um, if you don't believe me, and this is from yesterday, I took names out of it, and this is someone who contacted me yesterday, and he was complaining that the system he was using was doing good, and then it wasn't. So I asked him, how does he trade now? And he, he basically tells me, I found, an, I found an indicator on the internet, and he places to trade according to it. And it looks like he did, uh, from the beginning, he was doing good, and then you can see it was all loss. He has $5 left in his, his account, which right there was a screw up because until you're hitting 60 to 65% consistently 
a week, not a day, because you're always going to fall below sometimes. But if you cannot hit over 60% weekly, and I would say for a month or two, you have no damn... Uh, you have no damn reason to be trading. And if you are, you're just asking to lose money. And I'm sorry, you're stupid. So I asked him what was his system that he downloaded. And it was uh, BB Alerts, Stochastics, and another indicator called RSX. And he was using it on a one minute. So I asked him what does RX base its calculations on. And he t just basically flat out tells me, I don't know. It's just an indicator. So right there, we have a guy who is trading, did really good, lost everything, down to $5 left in his account. I ask him how he's trading, and he has no freaking clue. He's blindly following a system. That is just stupid. And some of you in the room might not be doing that, but the majority of people I get are following a system that they have no freaking clue how it's running, what it's based off of, or what the hell's going on, and they're losing. That's why. I mean, even for some of you, you have been trading a while. If you don't know what's on your chart, you're not going to know the market conditions. So you're not going to know when to trade and when not to trade. Um, just to wrap this portion up, so I went and looked up what RSX is. All RSX was was a smoothed out RSI. And he had a colored one that would go green and red, green and red. So he was taking it when his RSX was turning up here. When it went over, bought, oversold, I guess, it would turn red. And that's when he was jumping into a trade. If you've traded with RSI, we all know it can go over, bought, oversold indefinitely. It's not something just to be trading off of. So it would explain. On a ranging market, he probably had good results. And as soon as the market went trending, he probably didn't know what the hell was going on and why he was losing. Yeah, so we have one person there, and he, <laughs> he probably blew his account. <laughs> That's kind of a cool way to put it. Okay, so let's talk about indicators. Once you understand what's on your chart, you want to use indicators that complement each other, not duplicate each other. If you have six indicators on the chart telling you the same damn thing, it's just going to make your chart a mess, <coughs> and you're not really going to be benefiting from anything. I'm going to flip to a live MT4 chart real quick, just so you can um, kind of see what I mean. And no, not a sales pitch. Um, what I I guess what I failed to mention, I've been trading pretty much the same system for almost three years. Um, and it's gradually developed a little bit, and all it's done is really got prettier, but it hasn't really changed much fundamentally in how I trade. This is how I trade. If you notice, down at the bottom, I use value charts. I mean, probably 90% of the people around here know what value charts is. It's an overbought, oversold indicator. Um, let's jump into if you're using six of the same indicators real quick before we get into anything. So one of the most common things I see when people are using overbought, oversold, they're using RSI, and I'm just going to throw it on there. They're using uh, CCI. And stochastics. All three of these indicators, if you look at them, the shape that you're seeing, everything you're seeing on here, look, they almost all mimic each other. They're not exact, but they're pretty much all mimicking each other's shape. I mean, if we look right here, I don't know if it'll let me draw, it won't. Right in this area here, look, they all get a spike. Down here, they all have troughs. So if you have the same damn indicator, three different indicators telling you the same damn thing on there, that's freaking just kind of, I guess you could say, pointless. Um, pick one. Pick one you like. Pick one you understand. Pick one that when you adjust it to your time period. And what I mean by that is all indicators have, like, RSI in parameters. You can have different periods for it. If you're on a five-minute chart, you might prefer, like, a three or a four period because then it reacts to price faster. So here we get... This is a faster responding RSI. Looks a little bit different from CCI, but if I adjust CCI down to the same, we get almost the exact same picture. So hopefully that kind of explains, don't duplicate up. Now, so what can you do? Well, pick, an, now this falls into, I guess you could say the oscillator group. In the oscillator group, go through them, read up on each oscillator there is, find out which one you like. I prefer, if I'm using one, Stochastics, because you get a slower and a faster moving, and you have a nice little crossover that sometimes will let you take a trade down with the trend. But if you read through it, 
and find out which indicator you like, which indicator you understand the most, and why it reacts to price, the formula it uses, whatever. Find something that works for you. Find what you understand. Have that on your chart. Don't have something on your chart you don't understand. If we look at my charts, I use... Let's see... I'm trying to find a good one. Actually, I have some screenshots later, but... I use a combination of different things that have different formulas. The reason I do that is because I get how I said they complement each other. <coughs> Sorry about the cough. Okay, so I have RSI up here, but it's just a number. I have stochastics up here. It's just a number. Up here's ADX, which is another one that a lot of people like to use. It's just this. Down here I have value charts. The reason I like value charts is because it quickly shows a divergence in price. If I get a divergence, I can see it almost immediately the next candle. And I have CCI on top for today, but typically I use stochastics on here. Now, that's it. So down here I have overbought, oversold, and I use this, but mostly I use this to see the patterns in the waves, the up and down wave patterns of the market. I use Murray Math Lines, I use Daily Pivots, I use Fibonacci, and I use Round Numbers. Why? Because all of those indicators are based off of different formulas. If you don't know what I mean, there's you can go in and look each one of them up and I'll show you real briefly so you can understand here's pivot points if I go into these are all different types of pivot points that people's use um, if you go into Forex pivot points it actually explains to you on this website it's R3 equals H plus 2 so let's jump back out real quick and I'm just trying to show the difference there are different formulas so you want to find things that use different formulas so you can get a different picture of the market so Woody's is R2 equals pivot plus high minus low. So you see how the, the indicators use different formulas to figure things. You don't want the same indicator on there or several indicators that are using similar formulas because you're just duplicating up on the same damn information. It's kind of a waste of time, it's a waste of chart space, and it's just going to make your chart look ugly. Um, when this is over, I, I recommend anyone can hit me up. You can ask me questions about these type of things, but I'm just trying to get the point across of how you're doing it. And, I mean, there's also leading versus lagging. I don't want to get into all that. I'll save that for a webinar later. But you kind of get, hopefully you get the idea where if you're building your own system or you're trading a system, one, know what's on your charts. Two, make sure it's not duplicating. And three, your indicators should complement each other. Basically, they should be feeding off different algorithms to show you different perspectives of the market. Now, let's get into what do all these indicators show you. And this is another thing that goes back down to when you're trading. All Everything on my chart shows me, and you have to remember when you're trading binary options or Forex, all an indicator is is it's trying to show you visually where an order might be sitting on the stock market or on the Forex market. So this daily pivot right here, price is about to hit it. Does that mean it's going to reverse? No, it means I need to stop, watch the chart, and see if price reacts to that level. If price does not react to that level, there's no order there. Every indicator you have, all it's trying to do for you is highlight where a potential order is sitting in the market so that price you can react to it if price reacts to it. The indicator does not mean trade it. It does not mean take a trade. If you get an arrow, like if you can look right here, these little eyeglasses, and you notice I don't use arrows. The eyeglasses mean stop, look at the market. I got an eyeglasses here. It hit a daily FIBO and bounced back up here, dropped down, hit a round number, and reversed. If you look down here, it was overbought, oversold. I even had my little confirm indie popping. All I'm doing here is it's saying there might be orders here. So don't get carried away with your indicators. Don't put all your faith in them. The biggest thing I find for people to remember is that your indicator is to highlight an order. So if you keep that in mind, I think it will help you a lot. Like right here, a daily pivot was just blown through. So what, what's that mean? There was no freaking orders there. It's as simple as that. I mean, ha this just happened to happen at a good time. There was no orders there. Price got blown through, no orders there. So what did that indicator actually mean? Nothing. The other thing to remember is just because you have an indicator on your screen doesn't mean n everyone else in the world has the same damn indicator on your screen. Due to time, ch time zones, their daily pivot could be down here. So just because your daily pivot's here doesn't mean everyone else in the world is. Remember, everything is subjective on your screen compared to what someone else is seeing. Um, it's enough harping on indicators. Let's go back to here real quick. So again, use indicators that complement, that don't 
duplicate what you're seeing on the chart. It'll help you clean up your charts a bit and I bet if you go research what you have on your charts you're gonna find that you are duplicating up indicators. Okay so the next thing we know now that you know what's on your chart and how it works the next thing you want to look at is market conditions. You need to recognize when market conditions are favorable for the type of system that you're work running. For instance I, I for the most part trade pullbacks, reversals, mean revision, divergence, whatever you want to call it. Meaning I'm looking for a ranging market and I'm looking for a price to go overbought, oversold, and then based off of my indicators, and I'm a confluence trader, I'm looking for price to hit reasons for it to bounce and reverse. If the market is not ranging, I have a second system. I switch to Ichimoku and I trade pullbacks. So over the last three years, how do I trade? I trade one system for when the market's ranging, and I trade another system for when the market's trending. System hopping is going to screw you. Find something that works, stick to it. If it doesn't work, ask me. I'll help you out. Come to the live chat I'm in. I'll help you out. There's enough systems out there that are sound that you should be able to. If you're using a system with magic arrows and magic alerts and you don't know why they're there, get with whoever made it and ask them so you can understand. Learning to use it in the appropriate market conditions is where you will see people doing very well. And it's also when you see those people who Monday, they had a 10 out of 10 day and they were just rubbing it in your face they did good. And then the next day there's zero wins and 12 losses. Market conditions is your number one thing to learn. When will my system work? And the other thing is, if it's not going to work or you're not sure, you need to have the willpower to say, I'm not trading today. I typically, three weeks ago, I traded three days out of a five-day week because the market just sucked. Is that fun? No. Go clean your room, clean your office, clean your yard, go play with your dog, do something. But don't trade when the market conditions aren't there. If you don't have a backup system to pop to, so if it goes from a ranging market to a trending market, switch to demo and learn a trending system. That's the best advice I can give you. That pretty much sums it up for that. Price action. This is the next thing I get, and it goes along with market conditions. Once you've got your little technical system down, you're getting your alerts. Price action is not something that is instant. You are not going to learn it in five minutes, and you're not going to learn it in a week or two. Price action for me, literally, before I got my light bulb moment, it was about nine months into my trading, where I started to see how price action and my trading system work together. Um, when you're trading, and this is going to vary from person to person, I highly recommend you don't watch Netflix, you don't watch YouTube. For me, my personal limit is I can stare at charts for about two hours, and I freaking will lose my mind. After that, I can't even stand to stare at the charts. I'll start Netflix, YouTube, I'll screw off, and I'm not watching the charts anymore. If you're learning to trade, one of the most important things you can do, and this is if you're serious about it, is <coughs> learning to watch the charts, learning to recognize when price is reacting to your pivot point, your alert, your arrow, whatever you have on your chart that you're basing your trade off of, if you just jump to the chart when you get the alert and you enter and you're not watching what happens to price when it hits that area or looking for a pattern, something, you need to start learning price action. There's books, there's videos, they'll give you the concepts, but unless you're actually watching the chart, the action, that's why it's called price action, because you're watching the chart, you're not staring at something else and just jumping in when there's an alert. Cycle through your cycle through your charts. For me, when I was cycling through my charts and learning price action, I learned to pick up other trades other than what my system was offering me. So if if you're thinking, but again, let me state it, price action is not going to come overnight. It's, yeah, a it, lot said it. It takes a lot of focus. It's boring, but it's going to make the difference between you being a successful trader and it's going to between that or just being a technical trader who has your on and off weeks. I mean, how many people in this room are using a technical system? You are, you'll do great a week, bad a week, and if you look overall over the last two months, your account balance has done nothing. It's just basically been idle. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, but you're never seeing any building of the account. Because, And I'm most likely I'll say that you don't know market conditions or you're not paying attention to price action. So you're just going to go through this cycle of up, down, up, down, and you're never going to get any, I guess, your, your equity is never going to go up. The amount you have in your account is never going to go up.
So, and if it is you, don't feel bad. I mean, a lot of people don't, no one tells you, your broker sure as hell isn't going to tell you, here's a technical system, it works, but you know what, you should go learn price action and you should learn to recognize the markets for when they're good and when they're bad. Um, don't feel bad. And if you're serious about trading, don't expect it to happen overnight. There's a lot of people who offer systems that say, here you go, third, ten, a week later, you're going to be making money. It's bullshit. It really is bullshit. The one thing I will say, and I've told a lot of people this, is if you're serious about trading, and once you get it down, it cannot beat your job. And we were talking about this, I think, earlier this week. If you go to your boss every three months and you tell him you want a 10% raise, he's going to tell you to go pound salt up your ass. Once you become good at trading, you can literally build every three months. Your amount of money you're making is going to increase by 3 to 10% or more. Um, next week, I, we had a comment. My wins are good, but it all takes is one day to, to do it. Next week, I'm going to get into a little bit of the psychology of it. A lot of people don't like these webinars when I get into something not a system-based. They just get into, ah, I don't want to hear that shit. Some of the boring webinars you're going to get are the ones that are going to actually help you to succeed. This webinar is not... I'm going to get into some charts in a little bit to demonstrate some stuff, but some of these boring webinars are the ones that are going to make and break you. Let's put it that way. So hit up the boring webinars, guys. Hit up the ones on price action that say they're going to teach you something. You might pick up something. Money management is a big one. Psychology is a big one. They're the boring ass webinars, but pick them up. Um, so basically, sum it up price action. When you're at your charts, everyone's going to have their amount of time they can focus. For me, and I've been trading three years full time, I still can't do more than two hours staring at a chart. Stare at the chart for two freaking hours. Get what you can out of it. Otherwise, you're not learning anything. If you're just trading, if you're only looking at the chart when that alert pops or when that arrow pops, you're never going to learn. You're never going to succeed. You need to watch the charts. Cycle through the charts. See what's going on in the charts and watch how it reacts to levels. Let's see. How am I? Price action. Okay, so I'm going to cover a little bit on how I trade. And <coughs> sorry. I'm going to show just some samples from this morning real quick. And a couple people were in the live chat with me, so this is going to be boring because we already went over this. But And then I'll open up for questions. I'm going to give out the indie pack after I show the charts because you'll understand a little bit more about what I'm going to be giving out here. Okay, so first one I have... Uh, da -da, I don't even know what this is because I don't remember what order I put them on. This was UJ this morning. Now, this was a somewhat... It went into somewhat of a trend, and if you look down here, this little indicator here, it says trend caution, so I knew it was trending. I think I have that one in the indie pack for y'all. But why would I still get in a trade with market conditions weren't exactly favorable? I say I like to range trade. This was going into a trend. By how I said my indicators complement each other, down here I had a daily low, I had a round number, I had an extremely overbought current FIBO condition of 423. I had a daily FIBO of 61.8. I had a daily pivot, and I had a weekly support. And if we come down here, value charts was overbought, plus I had a confirm on it. Don't ask about it. Just It's a confirm. I took that trade because I had a shit ton of confluence. Basically, and this is, comes down to why I'm using indicators with different algorithms. Each trader sitting out in the world, and you think of it this way, trades a certain way. Let's say there's only four ways to trade. There's round numbers, FIBOs, daily pivots, and uh, Murray math lines. So if we looked at it that way, and, the, and this has a basis in reality, because each one of those things I mentioned are used by traders. So that's where they base, they place their orders off of. So based off that, let's say there's four ways in the world to trade. I had one, two, three out of the four ways in the world that people would trade were lined up for me. So for me, that was a pretty safe trade to take because I'm using three different ways to figure out the trade and three of the four were hit. Plus I was overbought, oversold, which is my key thing that I want. I want to be overbought, oversold, and then I want price to run into a freaking wall right here. It was my wall because I, not that I'm assuming, statistically wise, there's enough people out in the world that were using these levels that I knew when price hit it, it was going to do a temporary bounce. Was it going to be a permanent reversal back up? No. But I could pretty much damn count on the fact that there were orders sitting in this blue box somewhere. So that's why I took that trade. 
does that make sense for everyone when I say if there's only four ways in the world to trade, I hit three out of the four right there, and that's why I took the trade? Hopefully it does. And it also explains why I'm... It explains... It, why you don't want to layer up the same damn type of indicator. If I had four indicators using the same freaking reasoning and price hit here and it blew through it, well, because I'm only covering one out of the four ways people in the world trade. You want to spread out how you're doing it. Even if you get an arrow, you can see there was the little eyeglasses there. So that I had an alert that told me, come look at the trade. I don't use up and down arrows. I've removed them completely. All I want to see, and if you look over here, I have a little eyeglasses. All it means is I need to come look at that trade. That's not an indicator for me anymore to trade. When I was using up and down arrows, and I've been testing this with a group of about five or ten people so far, I find it works better because if you see an arrow subconsciously, it's telling you, take the fucking trade. If it's just this, this is just look at the chart. Is there a reason to take a trade? Keep in mind when you're doing that, that's... The snowflake is just a burst of the Bollinger... break of the Bollinger Bands. It closed outside it. <coughs> It's just, um, FIBOs and what like levels are likely to reverse. Uh, if you want, I can do a, I have a whole Fibonacci series, actually, that can explain that. I have four or five videos already done. Um, just send me, uh, when we're done, stick around for a minute and I'll find it for you, okay? Let's get on to the next one, as I don't want to bore everyone with shit that I've already covered before, because a lot of people have seen those. Uh, where the hell's my freaking thing? Oh, yeah, I lost it. Oh, wait, it's right here. Okay, so the second one was... Uh, this is Euro USD Again, I don't remember these from this morning. Why did I mark this one? I honestly don't even remember why the hell I put this one on here. Let me see on the notes real quick. Uh, I didn't put anything on there. I believe it was this candle here. I didn't even mark it. We'll skip that one because I don't remember why I put it on there. Sorry. Next thing I did, and I marked this on the Facebook group that I'm in. This was a trade that I set up in the morning. One of the things you can do once you start using levels... I go away. I don't want people calling me right now. One of the things you can do once you start using like static levels and other things like that, sorry, is th this was, and I'm going to show you the effects of this trade. I could identify where I was waiting for price to hit. This is in your indicator pack that I'm going to show you. This pink line was just the horizontal line, but I'm running an indicator called Alerter. It it sets so you can set alerts on your on your chart. MT4 lets you do it, but it's kind of clunky and I really don't like it. So what I did is it, I drew a line here and all I was doing was I was waiting for price to come down to this line. The arrows were my reasons why and this is because I expect orders to be there. So if we look, everyone understand why I picked this? Daily 500, daily support 1, we have Murray Math line, it was a weekly low. Daily low was right here by itself. Did I did not mark that because a daily low by itself not enough reasons even overbought, oversold for me. I want something stronger than that if I'm going to get into a trade. So I wanted price to hit here. So result of it, and this is an hour later. So here it is an hour later what happened. So literally I drew the line and I waited an hour for this to set up. And the result being... So I drew the line and an hour later, if you can look down at the bottom if you want to check time and confirm or whatever... Here's my candle when price hit my pink line where I had the trap. You can see it says, it's a trap, the alert popped, and I got in, and that was my trade. So you can plan ahead in binary options too. Once you understand what's on your charts, you can definitely plan ahead, and you can set traps. The indicator, I'm going to show you how to use it in a little bit. It's a very nice little indicator. You can use it for Forex, binary options, whatever, but it goes down to you need to understand what's on your charts. If you don't, then you can't do these type of things. I set traps on my charts all day long, whether I'm overbought or oversold. If I can identify an area where I had one, two, three, a weekly low, I would say that was four. The daily low got pushed to it, kind of five. 
a FIBO support for the hour we was hit was six. Six reasons are that there should be orders sitting there. That's why I took that trade. It's pretty much common sense. Overbought, oversold slightly. As you can see, it wasn't a full eight, which most people use on value charts. It was only like a six and a half, maybe a seven at best. But because of the confluence and because I could identify where orders may be sitting, I took that trade. So as you learn about the indicators and what they mean, and just keep in mind your indicators are there to identify orders, you'll start seeing areas of interest on the chart, and you can use that indicator to mark them so that even if your value charts, your RSI, anything else doesn't pop, you're still going to get an alert saying, hey, I want to know because price hit there, and I know damn well there's probably orders there. Next, the last one we're going to look at, and then I'll go over the indicator pack real quick that I'm going to give you, and that will be it. We'll ask questions then, and that will be it. Let me... Okay, so the last one... Okay, the last one's going to be covering um, market conditions and value charts, time frames, and MTF indicators. This is a question I had, and I threw it into the end. The question I had was, do I bump up to higher time frames to look, or I trade off of a five-minute time frame? So do I care what's happening on the one-hour, the four-hour chart, or a daily chart? The honest answer to that, for the most part, is I don't give two shits what's going on on the hourly chart. I don't give a shit what's going on on the four-hour chart. I don't care what's going on on the 15-minute chart, to be quite honest. If we look on this chart, these boxes here, these are hourly candles. The hourly candles, in this case, all they give me is a support and resist. On the five-minute time frame, what I'm looking for is a ranging market. So just because these are flat, yes, I have a small. The hourly can tell me, yeah, I'm ranging. But on the five-minute chart, what I'm looking at is it ranging. Because you can have a one-hour chart that doesn't look like it's trending very heavy, but your five-minute chart can be trending like crazy. Just because a one-hour is flat doesn't mean your five-minute's going to be flat. Just like if you're trading on the one-minute chart, you'll get a lot of good trades out of that, and the five-minute can suck. So if you're trading a five-minute chart, you need to be able to look at the five-minute chart and recognize the market conditions on that chart and really... For the most part, the higher time frames can help out a little bit. As you can see here, I have a really nice strong range because the one-hour charts are telling me, yes, I have a flat market. If I was looking at this on a one-hour, I'd say the market's dead flat. Five-minute, though, look, we have a nice range. I'm trading the five-minute chart, so I don't give a shit really about anything else. I just want to see that I have a range so I can trade overbought, oversold. Everyone get that how higher time frames, yes, they're useful to a point. Mainly, I would say the higher time frames are good for drawing support and resist. In this case, support and resist here is useless because it's a dead flat one hour market. That is a horribly flat one hour market, but the five minute market is outstanding. So don't get too caught up in different time frames. Focus on the time frame you're trading on and learn to recognize the market conditions on the time frame you're trading on. A lot of people are going to think I'm insane by saying ignore the higher time frames. I'm not saying ignore them, I'm just saying learn to recognize the market conditions on the time frame you're on and not deal with all the x don't cloud up your mind with well, on the one hour it's trending up but the five minute might look nice um other than that let's see that was it for samples so uh let me show you the indicator pack let me link it to you real quick and i'll show you what's in it let me grab it real quick And webinar, webinar. Here it is. I always try to give out crap when I do webinars since you got to listen to me. Okay, so there's going to be... Uh, come on. Give me one sec. Ah, oh, damn it. There's four indicators in here, I think. Some of you might already have these, some of you might not. Why is it not letting me? Ah, uh, there it goes. Uh, give me a second. Anyway, I'll post it there in a second. In there is going to be alert, BO price, the news cow, and t the trend warning. Alerter is the one that I showed you with the horizontal lines. Um, all you have to do is have it on your chart. Alerter right there. You simply draw, it can be a horizontal line or a trend line, so whichever you prefer, if you draw, if you use them. 
then you can mark it the way I'm about to show you. All you have to do is click on the horizontal line and let's say this is where you wanted it, an alert to happen. Once the horizontal line's on there, you just go to the, make sure you double click it, you'll get the little dots at the end. Go to the line properties and it has to be in the description field. You just type in a alert underscore the pound sign and any number you want. It can be one or one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't matter, whatever number. And then when you hit OK, you now have an alert when price hits that level. So that's in the Indie Pack. That's the easy way to use it. All you have to do is have the indicator added in. Any horizontal line or trend line you draw will then have an alert placed on it. And it's going to do the it's a trap crap. Uh, Jesus. It's way down there. There it was. You're going to get an alert that looks like that. It's going to say it's a trap. You can set zero pips from it, so if you want to know like one pip away from it, you can set that also. The next one we got in there is BO price. All BO price is, it takes the ask plus bid. If you're trading binary options, I highly recommend using this one. If this price does not match up with what you have on your charts, on your markets world, stock pair, whatever charts you're using, then you want to be aware because your your broker's probably playing with price. So font size you can adjust, that's it to it. It puts the price on there. This is an ask plus bid because if you look, this is 7.9. This price does not match this price. This price should match your broker's price, your binary options broker's price. It should be within at least one pip. If it's not, something's going on, you need to be careful. Third one in there is news cow. When I said market conditions, one of the things that you need to be aware of with market conditions is when economic news comes out. For this one, all you have to do is you need to make sure allow DLL imports is checked. And when you throw it up there, it's going to take a second to load. It's going to tell you when news is. It says initializing, but it'll take a minute. It's pulling data from Forex Factory. So we can see in 3 hours 39 minutes, we have USD Federal Chairman Troll Woman speaking. And it's a speech, so that means it's probably going to last an hour. It has a little bubble, meaning it's a speech. Uh, indicator, let's go into it real quick. You can input, it has several. If you have questions about this one, hit me up, hit me up later. I don't want to get too much into it right now. The last one that I'm going to be you have in there and some of you might already have these the last one is TA uh, trend warning that is right here current trend range bound this one you might not have well you probably don't um, it's a modified one of something called Dota I like it if you don't know the difference between a range and a trend and you're using a system that is dependent upon being traded it trade I can't talk if you need a range to be trading successfully, this one will help you judge. Do not count on it 100%. It is just a general idea of what's going on with the market. But it is the best one I have seen so far. Um, let's see. This one's trend caution. See, it's not really too bad of a trend. But if you're not sure, then stick with what it says. This one's trend caution. The reason it says caution is because for me, again, right here, I would not be trading my system. I would be trading this. This is how I trade trends. And if it's ranging, I trade this, trends, this. Again, I mentioned I have two different systems. That's it. I don't switch between five, six different systems. I have focused in. I've learned two different systems. And that, for me, works. Don't try and be a jack of all trades. Um, other than that, let's see. For some reason, it does not want to let me cut and paste. So I'll post this up on... <coughs> I'll post the indicator pack on the YouTube video. Other than that, open for questions. Does anyone have questions or anything? Just let me know now. If there are no questions other than that, um, I'll upload this now. My average number of trades on a good day, I would can get my favorite porn site. Won't be doing that. A my average number of trades during a two-hour session on a great day is ten. On a two-hour session, normal is four to seven. 
But, I mean, you've traded with me a lot, so, you know, after about two hours, I lose focus and start screwing off. Other than that, let me kill the recording. Doo -doo -doo.